Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having a fantastic day. I hope by the time that this video goes live, we've got some lovely, bright, warm, sunny weather. It's bright and sunny right now, but it's the end of the day on a Tuesday when I am recording this. And I'm recording this on Tuesday at the end of the day because it's going to get very rainy for the next few days. And then hopefully by the weekend, we'll actually get some good weather. But look, we've got some great things happening in the garden that I am ready to tell you about. Don't, don't look there. I haven't done that one yet. But over here, we have some progress. The fava beans have popped up. Uh, the mother beans are nowhere to be seen, but the fava beans are doing just great, or broad beans as we call them in the UK. I think next to them we have some lettuce. Let me double check. I think that is lettuce. No, that is not lettuce. I can't remember what that is. And I can't even read my thing. Is this mustard? A wasabina. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like a mustard. I've got some lettuce there. And I think we've also got some cilantro or coriander growing there. They haven't popped up yet. But yeah, you can see the, the beans are doing great. They will be popping up. And um, fava beans or broad beans, they take a while to grow. So you put them in early and they take a their sweet time. Look at the garlic. I haven't yet taken off the mulch. I need to because otherwise it will start growing too. But the mulch is doing great and we've got all this amazing garlic coming up out of the ground. It's going to be a garlic filled uh, bed and I'm very, very excited about all the cool garlic things that I'm going to be using in my cooking this coming year. Over here, the blueberries have started to get some fresh leaves on them, which is wonderful. I've already used a substantial amount of the garlic chives. As you can see there, they're cut and come again. So you just cut them and then they'll just grow fresh up. We've got the lemon balm there. The uh, sage is not doing so well. And the rosemary, well, the rosemary, I hope that the rosemary has not succumbed to the winter. I think I see some fresh leaves coming up there, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. This rosemary over here is not looking great at all. This is one that was given to me by my friend, Bill, but again, I think we're going to see some fresh leaves popping up soon. In fact, there might already be some on parts of it, but we'll have to see. Sometimes uh, gardening means that you lose things. Sometimes gardening means that things uh, pop up that you didn't think were going to survive and, and they did. But look, we've got some things that I have done this week. So over the weekend, the last weekend, I put in some onions and I have interspersed rows of onions as you can see all the way up there these are rows of onions interspersed with carrots so we're going to have a row of onions a row of carrots and the reason for that is carrot fly do not like onions and onion fly do not like carrots so hopefully they will uh, encourage or discourage each other from from attacking the relevant crops so that will be good and then over here here are my strawberries. My strawberry patch has been weeded. It doesn't look great. It's a little bit hodgepodge, a little bit disorganized, but I did have some strawberry runners and I ended up putting in the strawberry runners that had come off in places where there wasn't already strawberries. So hopefully later this year, we'll have a lovely batch of strawberries there. Ashley, how are you doing, Ashley? Yeah, this is Ashley's little home. She's doing okay. I'm just going to clean up her, her little bed there for her. Give her some fresh, some fresh bed material. Do what the chickens do and just spurge it about a bit. She's doing well. She's growing pin feathers now, as you can see. She's actually making some wonderful progress. See on the back of her head there, all those lovely pin feathers. She lost all of her, her feathers after the attack. And so I'm really glad to see that they're coming back in and they're growing because it must have been a really scary thing for her. Also, this young lady, who still doesn't have a name yet, this is Grace's daughter, she absolutely cannot stay in the coop. Come hell or high water, 
she gets out and she wanders around and she does her own thing. Go on, back in, in you go, every week. Every week she comes out and every week I'm gonna have to, nope, Charlie's not coming out. Every week she comes out and she wants to go back in. It's been raining today for a fair amount. So I'm gonna open this up and she's just gonna jump straight back in. Look, that is how well trained she is and how used she is to me going, it's time for you to go to bed, young lady. I'm gonna put Charlie and the other hens to bed and hopefully Charlie will not attack me. Someone said Charlie doesn't like, um, Charlie doesn't like uh, sandals and I think you're probably right. Don't think Charlie does like sandals. Go on, in you go. Problem with, with the, the, all the rain we've been having is that it's so wet and horrible and um, We've been working kind of hard to try and keep the chickens as dry and as protected as possible, but it's not been working because there's been lots of rain. <laughs> Charlie really does not like my sandals one little bit. He just tried to go for me again, but he couldn't, couldn't get me because it went through uh, the thing. I want to mention one thing. If you live in the Pacific Northwest, Check for invasive species again. It is that time of year when invasive species start to rear their ugly heads. There are no eggs in here because I've already been in here today and I'd forgotten. A few days ago, I found some Italian arum just chilling at the side of my house, or oh, rather down the hill. It's in a place that it has been before and we've known about it. And it's just frustrating to see this thing continually pop up again and again and again. And it's just been so bothersome to try and get it out. But I did dig it out of the ground. I got rid of it. And hopefully, again, we won't have any issues with it, uh, you know. But we'll, we'll have to see. We really will have to see because... It's a pain in the butt and I'm, I'm fed up with trying to deal with it. But what we do have here is some lovely growth here on my lilacs. They're looking lovely. These are second generation volunteer parsnips. They will get turfed out at some point when I put the um, potatoes in, which hopefully by the time you see this, I will have done. And over here, we do now have the start of some flowers coming. So if you look over here, it's very, very beginning here of thinking about making some lovely apple blossoms. And the same thing over here, thinking about making cherry blossoms, but we're not at full cherry blossom state yet. Hopefully we will be this time next week. I had planned on doing a it's cherry blossom time um, didn't happen this week but maybe it will next week and hopefully the weather will be better hopefully also the ground will have got a little less saturated and I will be able to mow my lawn because I haven't been able to do that this year yet and it is getting a little bit on the long side but we do have some good news here the parsnips are really shooting up look at them lovely rows of parsnips those ones are coming up and then if i come over here these guys are also shooting up that means that i'm gonna have all the parsnips <laughs> come uh come winter so i'm happy because i like parsnips anyway i think that's probably much it probably pretty much it for today's chicken and garden update so let me know how your garden is doing, what are you planting, what are you planning on planting, are you going to join me and put your potatoes in this weekend, it's when you're supposed to put them in, apparently you're supposed to put them in on Good Friday, not that anyone ever does, anyway if you are celebrating uh, this weekend, I hope that you have every piece of one and I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me today and if you've got thoughts make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. 
They are some of the more than 1,500 people that help make this channel possible by funding it through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, $10.08 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Ralph Koenig, Mr. Eldritch, Dwayne Edgar, and Corey Singletray. To join our list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll also find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at the address is listed below. And of course, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store link in the down below as well. This month, we are celebrating wrangling Evie Fudd with a fantastic t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think that this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!